don't listen to research. Uh, nowadays, uh, research can be backed by uh, many different sources, uh, companies, the government, all with different motives. If someone is researching, then they themselves don't have the answer. There's so much research nowadays that uh, people are researching researchers. And, and this just makes people confused. Um, researching researchers is like the blind following the blind. Most research is useless in healthcare, but I suppose it could be a hobby. You definitely want to take health advice from somebody who is um, doing more than just reading and has academic knowledge. You want to take advice from somebody who has actual experience and clinical experience and hopefully for many years. If they don't have experience meeting patients day to day behind a desk for 10 years or more when it comes to health care, then I wouldn't read anything that they write or anything they have to say. And any research has very little value. If you want to Think about it. If you want to fix your car, do you speak to somebody who just researched what other mechanics have to say or speak to a seasoned, experienced mechanic who has a long history of car repair? We all know that academic knowledge is nothing compared to real life experience. We all want to speak to the person with experience. So why are we reading this research? Why are we being pulled in by the research? Why are we believing it? And often the research we have today will be disproven tomorrow, like the research in the past has been disproven today. The research can say D1 is helpful, and then a few years later the research can say no, D1 is not a helpful supplement. It has uh, carcinogenic uh, side effects, so they come up with D2, and then the research says D2 is absorbable, but then research comes out and says that no, D2 is not absorbed in the help to, to absorb calcium in the bone, so they come up with D3. And they're already research disproving D3. So this is the, the life of a science and scientist. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, we uh, have gone through the age of information where we've had unlimited information and everybody's had the opportunity to share their ideas and research and experience, of course, due to the internet and the availability of computers. However, this has led uh, to what I call the age of confusion due to too much information. You know, in reality, Google knows nothing. Research does not prove anything. And we don't even know who is behind the research and their motives. Only trust those who are real and have real experience for all aspects of advice in life. I mean, so even though I cannot experience the symptoms of menstruation and I can still treat it, but not because of all my reading, all my reading and all my studying uh, didn't help me at all. It was only through time of learning from the patients themselves, from their experience. So you can learn from somebody else's experience, but uh, reading it only goes so far. Maybe it prepares you to understand somebody's experience and be able to interpret it, but it doesn't help you to have a, a deep understanding of a subject just by reading it, even if you're reading somebody else. Who knows? You have to have the experience in the end of the day. Season herbalists and uh, don't read research. Uh, we don't care if science has proven something or not. Science is always trying to prove things and coming to conclusions that are often proved incorrect in the future. Science, in fact, is slow to figure things out and often can't figure out many phenomena of the seen and unseen world. People say, well, if it's not proven, then it doesn't exist. Well, you, you can't prove love. You can't measure love. There's no uh, meter that proves that it exists between a husband and a wife but we know it's there the wife knows it's there or not there so you know science is very limited and um, it's not that helpful what for helping practical problems like giving birth to a child or fixing your car or helping your uh, improve a chronic health condition you need some experience of somebody who's climbed the mountain before who's uh, treated that particular health condition over and over and has the experience and knows what to do because there's often a lot of details and uh, that uh, uh, would only be gained 
by experience. For, uh, for example, conjunctive items or inflammation or infection in the eye. You can read what herbs will help, you know, mixing, say, triphala and coriander, or there's Western herbs like eye bright, you know, and even it can be dis, uh, made into an infusion and used to clean the eye. And there's many herbs that are known to help with this type of eye infection. But until you've cleaned out somebody's eye five times a day over and over and then cleaned out those little glands and get that pus out of there real gently and then rinsed it and moved the water around and you know sterilized the water before you did it and made sure you didn't you, you used cotton or, or uh, that wasn't bleached to not hurt the eye and 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 until you've really had that experience of cleaning another person's eye over and over and over and and seeing the healing take place i wouldn't recommend treating a serious eye infection without speaking to somebody with this level of experience and preferably just rather have them do it because even if they try to tell you from their experience until you have the experience you can't be good at it so even if i have the experience in something and i try to tell you until you've done it until you've experienced you are not an expert or you don't have the knowledge so we all know that uh, experience is uh, very important as an herbalist we know the actions and effects of certain herbs and formulas uh, because we've seen them in re results of our practice you know so whether science can figure out whether an herb works or, or how it works or why it works that's their job it's not of concern to an herbalist or somebody who's trying to use herbs to treat their health condition. What we care about is results and whether it works or not. Um, you know, herbology and the knowledge of herbs is an ancient knowledge and has been already proven by time. I'm talking about empirical knowledge, that which has been known um, because people have been doing it successfully for thousands of years. Um, and we could call that wisdom and we don't really need to prove it. We don't really need to have science prove it. Uh, if we know it works, if we've experienced it ourselves and it's worked, then who needs the science? The science is for scientists. It's, but it doesn't mean that if there's no proof or science hasn't got to it yet, then uh, it doesn't exist. There's thousands and thousands of herbs, and so far science has really only started with just a few, like turmeric and moringa, and tulsi and amlaki. You know, they're and some and Western herbs. They're just beginning to to even start to research these herbs. Not alone understand how uh, how they work and how they would work in combination as formulas, which is mostly how they're used. So my advice is, uh, don't keep researching, but learn from those who know and can prove that they know. And uh, don't continue reading modern research um, and to speak to those who have uh, more experience than you on the subject of hopefully a lot of experience because no amount of research and academic knowledge can make up for experience. I think we all know that. Um, so don't be fooled and misled by, you know, new research or promoters who are trying to sell a product uh, and basing it on some new scientific research. So that's why I do these webinars and these uh, classes is because this is uh, uh, me sharing my experience and most of my experience came from clinical practice and my knowledge came from other uh, Ayurvedic doctors and herbalists who shared with me their experience and then it became my experience and I'm passing that on to you. So uh, that's why I never refer to research or modern scientific studies i just uh, only uh, and i never am uh, using anything new or anything that's just been discovered or uh, has new research on it you can't be going by eating foods based on you know five foods that are high in vitamin d or 10 foods are high in magnesium based on the research even the whole science of nutrition, nutritional science is all just based on research of, of people in white uh, lab coats and laboratories looking at uh, things through a microscope and coming to conclusions that, well, there's more nutrients in, it in this particular vegetable uncooked than cooked. So then 
everybody's coming to the conclusion from this research that it must be better to eat it uncooked when maybe through history and time everybody's known it's easier to digest to just cook it but you know ancient Ayurveda science knew this thousands of years ago that the cruciferous family cabbage particularly raw can be a big colon irritant they didn't care why they just this is a reality it just irritates the colon difficult for some types to digest and it's always better to be cooked simple it's just the way people did it from experience ancient wisdom stick with that safer i hope that helped you thank you very much for your time please contact me if you'd like more information or you feel confused about what to do with your health care